So Gladwell's getting across a bunch of, a bunch of very complex ideas. He's, dealing a vi he's treating a very complex subject, and he tries to get it across to us in a few ways. He has this sort of personal anecdote, right? And then he has the sort of, then he has sort of large-scale metaphors, right? So he has, like, the David Hume black swan, right? To get across the idea of, ca of the unpredictability of catastrophe, right? And he has personal anecdotes, like Niederhofer's obsession with Americana and Moby Dick, right? Those are two different kinds of, those are two different kinds of metaphor, where on the one hand, we have a large, we have a large concept that's been somewhat abstracted, that's been sort of brought through the ringer a few times until the idea has been purified, right, where it really gets something about the structure of what's being talked about. And then you have the personal anecdote, which, may, which is more engaging, right, slightly less explanatory, has a little background noise, like why, like why Melville, right? And that's why we get the Titanic too, right? We have to have two of them because it doesn't really matter which one it is because um, he's too attached to it. And so there's some explanatory power lost there, right? But there's something wrong with the way that Gladwell does that, is that he takes certain things for granted, he sifts through too much information, he tries to explain too much to us with too many metaphors. He can't stay focused on a single metaphor. He goes through hundreds of hours of tape in order to get like a few, a few gems of quotes, right? And in trying to represent everything to us, he unfortunately like misses the mark in a few places and doesn't really represent anything at all to us in a certain way. His metaphors become opaque, right? They don't show us what's behind them. They don't do as much work as they're supposed to. And that's because he doesn't understand the metaphors he's using. He's, he's sticking them together in a hodgepodge. So this is what, um, this is what our friend, so on 71, on page 71, this is what our friend Steven Pinker is going to talk to us about. This is going to be a key example in the case of humanity versus Mal Malcolm Gladwell. Um, we've got a bunch of guys standing up at a board, right? And Taleb says, we say we have a Gaussian distribution. You have the market switching from a low volume regime to a high volume, P21, P22. You have your eigon value. You see it? Okay. So there's no such thing as an eigon value. Um, uh, uh, yeah. So so it, it's it's e i g e n value. The eigen value, one word, right? He also misspells Niederhofer a couple places. Um, but this isn't just a misspelling. This is him slapping some, slapping some information in there because it looks cool, right? He's not actually explaining any, anything to us. This is, this is, the, uh, this is, the, uh, this is the ideal uh, analog of name dropping, right? He doesn't even need that because he name drops through the whole essay, right? All he does is he gives us like information it, yeah, he gives us information in the place of explanation. He gives us metaphor in the place of analysis, right? He just has all of these totally undigested bits of information from people smarter than himself that he's treating as though they're his own voice. And the problem with that is, is if you screw up, everyone's going to know that it absolutely isn't your voice and you have no idea what you're talking about, right? And at that point, it becomes very ironic because the odds that because the odds of you actually explaining something properly when you don't understand the information that you're using, um, that means that he's just the lucky one, right? That means that he's the guy who just like keeps rolling double sixes, right? Because he clearly has no clue what's going on, right? He just keeps bumping into people smarter than himself and out of pure chance arranging the things that they give him in a manner that looks like it's somewhat convincing. Right. 
But here's a question. So you'll go in a second, but here's a question. What's the significance of Karl Popper in the article? What's the significance of David Hume in the article? Or Moby Dick, the Pequod, Captain Ahab, or the Titanic, which Titanic? Or the racing cup that they talk about? Anyone ever go to Sailing Anarchy? It's a great site. Or the Igon value. Uh, they're not going to give it to us. Anyway, the search comes up blank because it doesn't exist, right? Or Walter Mischel, or the book that I think that guy was reading while he's in the office that doesn't receive any explanation, but his only point is to show how these guys like quantification. Are you kidding? Then empiricism. What kind of empiricism? So many different kinds of empiricism. Epistemology. Are you serious? Which, which kind of epistemology, Malcolm? Yeah. Right? Put options, derivatives, the naked put, General Motors, Black Swan, not Natalie Portman, the Black Swan, the book. Uh, oh, it pulled down. Oh, that's too bad. Warren Buffett, right? The Chevalier as a knight. Uh, Lebanon and the Duke for whom one of the pieces of silver in the house is made. Three musicians versus versus See, because now I understand their, straight, their trading strategy, right? This doesn't have any explanatory power, right? It is the intellectual equivalent of this. That's not a geography lesson. It does rhyme. It does. Yeah. 